Let's make these primitive junk angels. We are beginning the process for our junk angels in the wood shop. I cut the spindles so that I would have three sections and then I cut it so that I would have a lip on each end. If you recall in one of my shorts, I showed how to get the paint off of these spindles. And then it looked like this. And then I simply cut here, one, two, three, and here to get this. Isn't that pretty how it turned out? To get the stain like this, I used my favorite wood tint, and this is in walnut. And you can see I use it quite a bit. The base for our angel will be the insulators. I showed you in a previous video as well. So this will be the base. It has a hole in the bottom. And I will simply drill, pre-drill a hole here, attach this, and screw that in. And it will sit up like that. If you can see that. Move this out of the way. There we go. And then I have these wood balls. The wood balls started out like this. I believe that they are one inch. And I simply stain these in the walnut stain as well. And these will be the head. But I needed a way for them to fit a little more securely. So I will be sanding each one so that it's a little flat so that when I glue it on the top, it won't wobble. So I'll do that for each of my angels. And that will be the beginning process. I'll be using my Dremel to pre-drill the holes in the top before I screw on the insulator. I placed the dowel piece into my vise so that I get a nice secure hold. And if you know me, I need a little template, so I'll put the template on top so I know where the center is. And just like that, we have our hole. And then, see the hole here? It will go like that, and then I will attach a screw. And I'll show that to you too. I dug out some nails I thought would work because it has to be, this is going to be the bottom and then it has to go in the hole and I think that's enough grip to hold that and I'll just put a dab of glue in there. I put a screw in each one on the bottom and now we have our base for our junk angels. And I kept the embossing on the bottom because I just wanted to see that. Now we just need to attach our heads, but let's get those heads attached. I remember I said I was going to flatten each one of these, but they kind of look like Buckeyes, don't they? And then I will glue on the top each head. I'm going to put a dab of hot glue and a dab of wood glue. And it's okay if this glue is showing because we can clean that up later. Plus, she'll be wearing a pretty necklace around her neck. Last one. 
I'm making 10 of my junk angels because I want to personalize each one. All right, number 10. We'll let those set up and dry. Now I'll pick out some jewelry. I think we have everything we need to make some necklaces for our angels. I will meet you upstairs in the craft room. Our angel has to have wings, right? So I, I drew up a template and this is going to be the wings. And I already have this coffee dyed fabric and then these doilies are well aged. So I thought I would use this um, cellulite, the Pellon, and lay it out on there and then trace out onto that the pattern and then sew the outline and then cut it so it has frayed edges. So I'll get that set up and I'll be right back. I just wanted to show you my idea and that was to draw out the angel wings onto my um, cellulite, the wash away embroidery stabilizer. Then underneath I will lay the coffee stained fabric and on top of that I will lay the doily. I will leave a link in the description box below of the angel wings and I also made a dress. So feel free to use that if you'd like. Otherwise, you can draw out some wings. If you've been here long enough, you know I have to have a template for everything, right? There's one. And I will finish these up and I'll be right back. The next thing I'm doing is I have a blank sheet of the wash away uh, stabilizer. It's on the bottom. So I'm gonna lay that down. And I'm going to lay another one down. If you have to crisscross, that's okay. Like that. And then we'll lay one down here. And then we will lay this on top and make sure it matches up to the stabilizer on the bottom. Then we'll take our coffee stained fabric and just start laying that so that we know we've got the wing intact. Just like that. Take a pin and pin that. Just like that. Grab another piece of fabric and put that underneath. And the whole idea is we're going to sew right on this line here and then we can cut it out. And then we will pin this entire thing down so we can get it in the sewing machine and sew those lines. I have all of my wings pinned down, but not only do you want to pin down each wing, you're going to pin down in between because with this, we are going to sew um, horizontal and vertical lines all throughout so that everything stays attached. When I've got that done, I will be back to show you what I've done at the sewing machine. I just wanted to show you this before I sewed around the edge of each angel wing. 
of how they're turning out. And this, no need to worry, we can use this, these edge pieces in our slow stitching project. So nothing will go to waste. Right now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and sew around all these edges. Then I can cut right around and we can wash off the stabilizer and let those dry. I'm back from the sewing machine and I have sewed on my line all the way around each wing. Now what I need to do is cut close to, but don't go into the stitching around each wing. I'm going to be using my snipping scissors because you want something with a precise tip so that you can get around without cutting into the threads. So you want some control. And I think this will be perfect. I am going to cut these into sections so it'll be easier for me. And I'm just going around that stitching. And it doesn't have to be perfect. There is one. Look how pretty. I'll go ahead and cut the rest of these and then we'll dip them into water and get the stabilizer off. After that, I will be using some of this Beacon Stiffen stuff. I really want these wings stiff on our angel. Something like that. Or I might put the lace to the front. I just finished spraying the angel's wings with the stiffened stuff. And you just spray all over. And it says that you hold it the bottle six to eight inches away from the item and you spray into the fabric is wet and it's an average one hour dry time. And then you let it dry and then if you want it stiffer, then you put another coat of this on. So I'm going to put that to the side so that I can begin work on the dresses. So for my angel's dress, it's going to be the same premise. I'm going to trace this and then I'll sew along and just cut out so that we have a raw edge. And what I will be doing, because I want it to be a thicker dress, to put on the front here. I'm going to um, put some batting in between the two pieces. And this is Polyfill Project Fleece. So I've had this a while, so I figure I might, might as well start using it. So my idea is to take a piece of this and put it in between, just like that. And we'll see how that goes, and then we'll prim it. We're going to prim this up really nice with some coffee stain and some cinnamon. So let me trace all of these out. I've got all of the angels dresses cut out and sewn and I sewed around the edge and on the inside. And now it's time for the coffee dye. Coffee stain ready to go. Our grunge sprinkler. Pour some in here.
And it has been quite cool here, so I'm thinking I'm going to have to toss these in the oven to dry. And I'll go ahead and do the rest of them. Time to sprinkle. And remember, you can be generous because you can always sand off any extra you don't want on there. This smells so good. I wish you could smell it. Eh, that was way too much. And you just kind of rub it in there. Okay, it's time to get these dried. I just couldn't help myself. So I went ahead and copy dyed these as well. And I really like that. So I'll need to put the stiffening agent on again. So that they can dry again. But I really love how that turned out. I'm working on embellishing the dresses for our angel. And I'm thinking some cheesecloth with stain with a button. And then I do have the cross. And I thought I would just hang it right here with one of these pins. I'll put a jump ring on it and we'll see how that looks. All right, here's how the cross looks with the little pin and then the jump ring is on there and it can dangle. Now let's get that button sewn on. All right, what do you think with the button right here and the cross? I really like that. We're going to work on the halos next for our junk angel. And this was like a prototype so that I could measure it. But I thought, I remembered I had this old artistic wire coiling gizmo and it winds the wire and I thought that would be really cute up there. So we're gonna try this and see what we can come up with and then use the rusty wire. I'm going to try to get a shot of me making one of those for you. This tool comes with different rods and you just slide it in here and you're just going to coil your wire. And it comes in really handy for primitive crafts and I'm going to leave a nice tail and what you do is you wrap it around here. I'm leaving a tail to make the end of the halo to sit on top the head. And then you just kind of guide with your thumb and start making the coil. Whatever amount you think you're going to need. And hopefully you can see that. And just let your wire dangle. And when you're ready, just pull it off. So it made this coil for us. And I've got my wire cutters here and I'm just going to snip it like that. Unwind this, pull it off, and I'm just going to pull it out and readjust it kind of like that. And then the longer piece, 
What we're going to do, there we go, that's what I wanted. Because I want to see, I'm trying to make a circle for the halo. And then we're just going to twist. As such. I've got a mandrel to help me make that circle. Okay, so we need it to be a little tighter. So just bring it in. And I'll probably just hot glue that on there. And what I'll do here, I'll snip this off. And then bend that down so it doesn't cut anybody. As you can tell, I am not a jewelry maker, but I have a vision for something and I want to try to make it come to life. And hopefully you can see that. There is our junky halo. And we'll just sit up here. And like I said, I will just hot glue that on there. We only have one thing left to work on. And that is the necklace. I'm going to use this um, Stretch Magic. Um, I found this in my stash, and I think it'll be a lot easier to string on the beads. And here's one that I made. And then it would just slide over. Like that. If you need to, go ahead and grab if you need to, go ahead and grab a stopper. I need to because I would have beads all over my craft room. And then just start beading. Whatever beads you want to use for your angel. And I'm just grabbing randomly. And see, the stopper will keep your beads from going all over your craft room, which I'm pretty sure I dropped some, but I will find them later when I sweep up. I wanted to show you how I'm tying the beads. I just put it around, come to the back, and I do one over, two over, and tighten. And I do that again, one over, and tighten again, and then I do a knot, what it will look like. Look how pretty this one is. So the whole point is you can accessorize your angel however you like down to the dress and even the wings. You could add pearls to the wings. That would be really pretty. Different beads for the necklace. It is now time to assemble our angel. I think I told you I'm going to be making 10 of these. I'm thinking that I'll keep one for myself and put the rest in an upcoming craft show. 
So um, I did make some extra necklaces. These are so adorable. And then here are the turquoise ones. And then here is a multicolored, but just a variety. This one has a stone in it. And then one white one. And then I made our halos. And we have our wings and our dress. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is attach the wing. And I'm thinking the top edge will be at this lip. And what I will do is I'll just take some fabric fusion and dab some of that on. And then I'll take my glue gun just so I can have some instant adherence and lay that on there. And press it down and then our wing will be attached. Next, we're we'll putting on our dress and our dress will go up around the neck like that. So I will add um, some glue and also a bead of, or a line of hot glue, get to the edge. And carefully put that on there and hold it for a second. Make sure that stays down. Our dress is attached and our wing. I'm going to go around with the glue gun and just dab some hot glue in there to make sure that necklace stays in place. And we're going to use this necklace. Bring that down. And then we need to attach the halo. And I will just put some hot glue in. Some different spots. And there is one angel. I think she is adorable. And it might be a good idea to add a bit of hot glue right here to hold the bottom of the dress. What do you think? And you can embellish this however you like. I hope you will make your own primitive junk angels and share them with the special people in your life. Let me know in the comments how you will embellish your angel. Before we go, I want to leave you with a simple yet important message. In our busy lives, don't forget to take time for yourself, whether it's through art, music, writing, or any form of expression. Allow yourself the space to be creative. It's not just about the end result, it's about the journey, the process, and the joy it brings. Thanks for crafting with me today, and until the next video, keep creating and God bless.
If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so that you never miss a video. And if you're returning, thank you so much. And if you have found value in this video, please like and comment.